Well, speaking of support for entrepreneurs, um, we are, are lucky to have our, as a panelist Roger Ross, who is CEO and founder of Commonwealth Licensing Services, a California-based independent IP advisory. For decades, Roger has been regarded as one of the top IP professionals in the world, holding critical roles at well-known companies like Panasonic and managing the Dolby-supported independent IP licensing entity, VIA. At Commonwealth, Roger assists entrepreneurs, including university spin-outs, in developing and implementing IP strategies. Uh, so, Roger, describe how you interface with the university tech transfer offices these days. And um, also, thank, thank you, Rob. Thank you, everybody, for um, hosting, and thanks for a warm day. Uh, I've done a lot of these panels, and I think the, the first thing I'd say is this is a first for me. I've not been on a panel in 25, 26 years with another person from Kentucky. So you've got two <laughs> Kentuckians here, for better or worse, right? So, um, uh, Did you that, bring bourbon? <laughs> yeah, we've got bourbon in the, in the backpack. Um, so, the way, so I am on uh, sort of the other side of, of the table um, without you know, trying to sound too adversarial. I, I'm usually representing uh, a, a founder or maybe a company that's a little further along uh, but but some some startup or founder that has taken a license from uh, from a university, um, and that they they may have been in related to the technology, they may have been in the uh, academic part related to it, or they may have just taken a license with the university, and now they're out trying to make money with that technology. Um, the way that I, I usually get involved is a founder will um, run into a problem or have a, a perceived or actual issue with the agreement and how they're trying to do some business. That comes up a few different ways. That'll come up through a, a, a financing, a VC, or, or a, an investor will say there's a problem here with your intellectual property or there's a problem that we think you need to address with your licensed technology. Or it could come up other ways too. Maybe the, the business model that everyone thought they were going to pursue has broken. They're going a different route and now the, the royalty base doesn't make sense or some, uh, some, something that's in the license is broken for them. Um, so the, you know, the first thing we'll do is I get involved and I sit and, and we'll look at the license together and we'll decide is, this, you know, is it a perceived problem or is it a real problem? Do we need to seek an amendment or can we address this through something that they're doing in the business, either by changing the way that they price or changing the way they bundle things together, um, or even it might be a field of use problem that they can handle through a different, without actually going back to the university. Now, assuming that we, we sort of fail those, uh, you know, those, that exploration, then we will go back, and this is, this is interesting because it's almost always, I'm, I'm almost always in the back seat. I don't know if it's a, uh, a relationship thing or whatever, but I tend to be um, meeting with the founder, and the founder will then go meet or talk to uh, someone in the office that they have a, a relationship with. And that will go back and forth, and we often make very good progress that way, where it's just someone advising, probably someone on the office side talking to the founder and the founder coming back to me. But eventually, if we can't make progress, what will happen is we'll either start drafting an amendment to the agreement or start getting engaged, and then the, the office will bring in outside counsel or inside in-house counsel and we'll, we'll actually sit down at a table or sit down at a, you know, at a Zoom conference and hash it out just like you would any deal. That's, that's sort of my relationship with the, with the TTOs. 